Okay, let me go through this. So, equation for photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is carried out by plants and the whole point of it is for them to create their own food. And the food that they uh, create is glucose. So it's carried out by plants to produce glucose. So that's going to be one of the products. So we've got a, we'll write the word equation and the symbol equation. So in our word equation, one of the products is glucose. The question's asking, what is the other product? So what do you need for photosynthesis? What do plants need? Plants need a lot of water. They also need a lot of carbon dioxide. So these are the reactants. Product is actually oxygen. The answer to that question was oxygen. So yeah, so let's memorize this very important in biology, not just in paper one, paper two, any biology test that you'll do can pretty much ask photosynthesis if it's on plants, obviously. Um, yes, so water plus carbon dioxide goes to glucose and then we've got, someone said energy. Energy is not released. Energy is taken in here, but we'll talk about that in a second. And yet respiration is the opposite of that. It's uh, aerobic respiration is the opposite of that. So where in the plants does photosynthesis occur? Plant cell. So think about the cell topic. What do you guys think? Vote on the answer and tap the screen. Yep, occurs in the chloroplast. Well done, guys. So we'll write that down here. So carried out by plants. Uh, and we'll say it's in the chloroplasts. And we'll try an exam question now. So light is needed for photosynthesis. That's very important. So in our equation here, we're going to write light here. Light comes from the sun. Why is light needed for photosynthesis? Can anyone tell me why is light needed for photosynthesis? Can't happen in the dark for energy, exactly. You need it for energy uh, to transfer energy. So you gotta be, sorry, yeah, to transfer energy. That's because, um, I wouldn't say it's activation energy. The reason it needs to transfer energy, it needs to take in energy, is because it's what type of reaction is it? What do you call a reaction? This is chemistry as well. What type of reaction is one where energy is taken in? Does anyone know? It's an endothermic reaction. Yep, exactly. So it takes in energy. What else can we say? We can say it's an endothermic reaction. Let me go back to these notes. Add that in as well. Endothermic. Nice. Uh, so which equation here is correct? We'll write this down. So this is the symbol equation this time. We just did the word equation, A, B, C, or D. Let me know. So most of you are saying it. Option three, option three. So we've got someone saying B, we've got someone saying C, most people saying C, we've got some people saying B. It's going to be, so let's look back at our equation. Water is H2O, carbon dioxide is CO2. Glucose, this is the one that people forget, C6H12O6, and oxygen is O2. So to balance this, just memorize, you need to put six on everything apart from glucose. So the answer is, C. So let's see. Yep, we got our answer there. To transfer energy, do not say produce, make, create, or use energy. So to transfer energy. Or you can mention that it's endothermic reaction. That's fine as well. We, we talked about that as well. Uh, and then, yeah, the next one was correct. All right, on to the next one. Photosynthesis is considered to be what type of reaction? We just said this one. Hopefully everyone knows, endothermic, let's remember that. It's taking in light, R best way to remember it, it needs light for it to happen. Light is giving it energy, so it's going to be B. Yeah, exactly. What pigment is responsible for absorbing light energy in plants? So what, what part of the plant absorbs the light energy? A, B, C, or D, let me know. And then tap on the screen a few times. Yep, yeah, good chlorophyll so you have your chloroplasts inside your chloroplasts you have chlorophyll so i'll give you guys access to these notes once i've uploaded it on youtube uh, chlorophyll which is a green pigment and what it does is absorbs light absorbs light energy for photosynthesis well done guys next question okay another exam question Green plants can make glucose, yeah, so that's through photosynthesis. Plants need energy to make 
glucose how do plants get this energy so this is two marks so we know where that it gets the energy from how can we get two marks here it's because light so if you mention light energy then you get one mark what's the second mark for we just mentioned it in the last question light energy is absorbed what do you think the second marks for chlorophyll screen turned black is that for everyone else can everyone see someone said the screen turned black by chlorophyll you can see okay fine must just be that one person okay cool so that's the two marks there that's fine next question plants can use the glucose that they've made to supply them with energy yes that energy comes from respiration we'll talk about that in a second but there are four other ways in which glucose can be used in plants one two three four let's add these to our notes what do you guys think let me know uses of glucose so we've already said one which was respiration so transferring energy through respiration there's four more ways that they can use it how long's the live about an hour uh not move movement still comes under energy cellulose yes cellulose it's used for making cellulose in uh, you find that in cell walls what is cellulose yes yeah, cellulose is what cell walls are made out of that's the outside of the plant cell it makes it uh it, it helps it keep its shape i will post this on youtube don't worry my youtube guys is um flash revision lab same thing so subscribe to that if you want to have access to all these notes and all, all my lives if you want all the uh, old lives as well so that's one of them making cellulose anyone know any others not glycerol no for growth kind of for growth what do we need for growth try and think what we need for growth we need proteins for growth right how do they make proteins they make amino acids so using the glucose they can make amino acids they basically combine them with nitrate ions to make amino acids which make proteins which help them to grow that's another one two more things we've got is two ways that they store them how do we usually how did how do humans store extra sugar that they have sometimes they store it as fats they do the same so they store it as fats or oils uh, and they usually do it in seeds in their seeds and then the last one is stored as starch yep well done guys stored as starch so this is what uh, trees do in winter when their leaves fall off they don't photosynthesize much but they have a lot of starch um, in their uh, in their barks and their roots so we can say in stem slash roots they have uh, starch so those are five different ways so memorize those five way how do they get energy for active transport through this respiration so they use the glucose for respiration and they use it for all their processes for like moving for movement basically so any four of those no not any four it has to be four we can't mention respiration because that's already been stated in the question so we have to say for making starch for making cellulose uh, what were the other ones you said amino acids and also fats wasn't it yeah making fats or oils lipids yeah you can say lipids as well so let's just double check the mark scheme so yeah we said light you have to say light for that first question we did light is absorbed we use that word by chlorophyll you can say chloroplasts as well that's fine second one we listed all of them we listed starch oil amino acid cellulose allow for active transport as well so they did accept that as well and yeah that's all good all right on to our next question let's go what is not a main way plants lose glucose so based on what we just did which of these are not part of the list so this should be a quick one guys we literally just did it now Vert your answer and tap on the screen a few times. Yep, exactly. Straightforward. D. That's not part of the list. It's not used for making chlorophyll. They used uh they use a different ions, mineral ions to make chlorophyll. Which factor does not directly affect the rate of photosynthesis? So this is the next thing we're going to look at. Out of these ones, what do you think does not affect photosynthesis? A, B, C, or D? C, 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 C. So we got some people saying B, we got some people saying C. The ones that you learn in GCSE, you learn three that you need to know in a lot of detail. You need to know light intensity in a lot of detail. You need to know carbon dioxide concentration. 
And you also need one more that's not on this list. Does anyone know what the third one is? And temperature, yeah, exactly. You also need to know temperature. These are all external factors that affect photosynthesis. An internal factor that affects it that you don't really talk about in your exams, chlorophyll concentration, because if you have more chlorophyll, you're going to be able to photosynthesize more, isn't it? Because you'll be able to uh, absorb more sunlight. So that one will increase the rate. So it's not that either. That's not the answer. Sound frequency, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, have, it's not affected by sound. It doesn't matter how high pitch your sound is. It's not going to affect it at all. So it's the answer is sound frequency for this. That doesn't affect it. But yeah, let's, uh, let's add this to our notes. So we've got three factors affecting photosynthesis that we need to know in detail. So we've got light intensity. I say we need to know this in detail because we need to know all of these graphs. CO2 concentration and the last one is temperature. And we'll come back to draw these in a bit. A graph plotting, here we go. This is asking about the graph. What do you guys think the graph looks like? Plotting light intensity. So that's our first graph there in our notes, this one. How would that look like? That's what the question's asking. Is it going to be a decrease? Is it going to be no change? Is it going to be increase without limit or direct increase then plateau? A, B, C or D? Let me know. So yeah, most people are saying A, that is the correct answer. A, so there's a slight direct increase then a plateau. Plateau just means it goes flat. So it's going to go up, 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 up and then it plateaus. That's the same for CO2 concentration. These two graphs, exactly the same. So that's CO2 concentration against rate of photosynthesis. So rate and rate that side, same here. Temperature looks slightly different. Can anyone tell me why temperature looks different? How does it look different? Why does it plateau? Yeah, we'll talk about that as well. The reason it plateaus is due to limiting factors. Can anyone tell me what a limiting factor is? Limiting factor is something that stops is something that stops photosynthesis for uh, from increasing anymore thank you nav something that stops photosynthesis i'm going over my graph here from increasing more okay so in this first graph this is a graph of rate against light intensity what would be limiting it? So at this point here, why does it plateau? Because light intensity is increasing. Remember the x-axis here is light intensity. So that is increasing. So what's stopping it from increasing anymore? It would be one of the other two factors, either CO2 concentration or temperature. So you would say CO2 or temperature is the limiting factor. That's what stops it from increasing anymore. You can say the same here, that's why it plateaus. But this time it's not CO2 concentration that's limiting um, limiting photosynthesis, it's one of the other two. So it's gonna be light intensity or temperature, that's the limiting factor. Because one of those needs to increase in order to increase the rate even more. So the last one is for temperature. So what does that look like? Here, this is the one that's different. It's increasing graph and then it suddenly decreases. Maybe not vertically like that, almost vertical. Um, and it decreases at around 45 degrees C. Why is that? Yes, I'm seeing the right answer. It's because of enzymes. So what's happening at this point here? So it's nothing to do with limiting factors. It's the enzymes at this point the temperature is too high that the enzymes are denatured. And if they're denatured, it means the rate of photosynthesis isn't going to increase. It's not going to happen as fast and it's going to cause the plant to probably die. All right, let's go back to our questions here. So in direct increase and plateau. What is the limiting factor for photosynthesis at night time? So what stops photosynthesis from happening any faster? A, B, C or D, let me know and then tap on the screen a few times. Everyone's saying B. Yeah, because at night time there's no light. So that's what's stopping photosynthesis happening any faster. The light intensity needs to increase. So it's going to be B. All right, we've got an exam question now. 
Question one, how can oxygen production be used to show the rate of photosynthesis? So they've highlighted the word rate. What do you guys think? How can you use oxygen? So one mark, how can you use oxygen to show the rate of photosynthesis? What do you guys think? <laughs> Thank you for that, Georgie. The practical, you can't say that in your, in your exams. There's something else about rate. Anyone know? No? You need to basically, it is to do with the practical, but you can't just say practical. In the practical, what you do is you measure how much oxygen there is in a given time. So that's all you got to do. You got to, uh, you, you need to measure the volume of oxygen or the amount of oxygen in a given time. The more oxygen in a given time, the faster the photosynthesis because it's producing uh, more of the products. So that means it's producing more glucose. So how can oxygen production be used to show the rate of photosynthesis? More oxygen in a given time means faster photosynthesis rate. Uh, next one, name the factor that's limiting the rate of photosynthesis at point X. What do you guys think? We've got three factors that we can say. We can either say light intensity, CO2 concentration or temperature. Remember, those are the three that you'll get tested on. One of those three, so at that point, what do you think is limiting it? What could increase it? So we've got people saying light and temperature. We, there's one we can definitely say, it has to be, look at it, it's not maximum, it's not maximum. It's not at a maximum here. That's the plateau, it hasn't reached the plateau. So that means if you increase light intensity more, if you make the light intensity higher, the rate is also going to increase. So that means light intensity is a limiting factor because it's stopping it from increasing even more. At point X, once it reaches the plateau, it's no longer a limiting factor. At this point, it's probably temperature or CO2, but it hasn't reached the plateau. So the answer is light intensity. So let's just check the answers. Yeah, measure the volume of gas in a given time. You have to say that because it's all to do with rate. The question was asking about rate. You have to say in a given time. You can't just say measure the volume of oxygen. Same here, when more oxygen is produced in a given, light, uh, given time, the rate of photosynthesis is faster. And then for the bottom one is light intensity. Answer is light intensity. You understand now. Okay, fine. I'm going to move on to the next one. What happens to the enzymes involved in photosynthesis at temperatures above 45 degrees? We did this about five minutes ago. What do you guys think? Quick vote here. So vote and then tap on the screen a few times. Yep, yep, yep. They're denatured, exactly. Next one. Respiration. Okay, so this is all about respiration. Respiration in plants and animals is primarily, primarily for what do we use respiration for? Yep, this is biology. We're going through photosynthesis and respiration. We're going through exam questions, multiple choice questions, and we're, going, and we're writing some notes while we do it. Yes, respiration. The whole point of respiration is to transfer energy. So let's add this to our notes, respiration. Where does it transfer energy from? Where does it get the energy from? Transfers energy from? Yeah, thank you. Glucose, transfers energy from glucose. And there's two types aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration don't worry georgie you can um you can revise more and you'll you, you can get these questions right aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration so we're, we're going to talk about that in a bit respiration is not what out of these ones what is respiration not let me know breathing in and out an exothermic reaction a process in every living cell or is it transferring energy from glucose? It's definitely this. So it can't be that as the answer because it's saying respiration is not. It's a process that happens in every living cell. It is exothermic. Is it exothermic or is it endothermic? Endothermic, remember, we use that for photosynthesis. That's when it takes in energy. Exothermic is when it does the opposite, releases energy. So respiration you can think of as the opposite of photosynthesis. It's exothermic and that's because it releases energy. So the answer is breathing in, in or out. Breathing is not to do with respiration. Breathing is a process where you take in oxygen into your lungs and then from the lungs it goes into the blood. That's breathing and you're, you're breathing out carbon dioxide. Respiration is when you transfer energy from glucose but you get that oxygen from breathing in, in or out. Uh, what is metabolism? A, B, C or D? Let me know. 
I'm just going to do a quick poll as well, guys. Let me know what exam board you are. Interested to see. Uh, yeah, just put it up now. It's up there for five minutes. So let me know what exam board you are. So we've got people saying A slash B. Transfer of energy in plants, no. Breathing, no. It's one of these two. The answer is A. Metabolism is the sum of all the reactions that occur, okay? Including respiration. Aerobic respiration requires, so what's the difference between aerobic and anaerobic respiration? What is respiration? So we just went through this. Respiration is when you transfer energy from glucose, and there's two types, so we're gonna talk about that now. We're gonna talk about aerobic respiration, anaerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration is where is respiration with oxygen. Anaerobic is without oxygen. Any other differences between the two? What about the equations? Let's write the equations down. So the equations, you can memorize aerobic respiration as the reverse of photosynthesis. So that's going to be glucose plus oxygen forms carbon dioxide plus water. And simple equation, C6H12O6, plus remember six on everything apart from glucose. That's it. Aerobic is more efficient. Yes, it is more efficient. It releases more energy. Anaerobic is less efficient. Anaerobic, yep. So for anaerobic, you got glucose goes to lactic acid, but that's for humans. So there's a separate equation for humans. There's a separate equation for plants and for yeast as well. So for humans, glucose goes to lactic acid. You don't need to know the symbol equation for this. Just the word equation is enough. And then for plants, anyone know what the equation for plants is? Ethanol, yep. Glucose goes to ethanol plus one more thing. Does anyone know what it is? What's the extra thing that anaerobic respiration produces in plants? Plants slash yeast. Yeast does this as well. Carbon dioxide, well done guys. I'm just gonna write as CO2 here. Uh, again, only word equation needed here for GCSEs. You don't need to know the chemical equation. Aerobic respiration requires, yes, most of you got this now. Oxygen, well done. Okay, next question. Where am I gonna draw these lines? Let me know. So the top one for aerobic respiration, A, B, C, or D, let me know. So aerobic respiration is B, yep. Aerobic respiration uses oxygen, so we said that already. Anaerobic, it says here, look at what it says, in human cells. So that's why you gotta be careful when you're picking the right one, which one is it going to be? So if people are saying B and C, someone's saying A, someone's saying D. What do you guys think? Anaerobic respiration in humans produces ethanol, carbon dioxide, or lactic acid? Clue, I just told you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Lactic acid, remember in humans it's lactic acid. You, it builds up in your muscles when you're doing exercise basically. It's what, uh, what gives you fatigue. Next question, the table below shows the amount of energy released by aerobic and anaerobic respiration. So we've already said in our notes that aerobic is more efficient. So just why human cells might respire anaerobically. So why would we need it is the question. If aerobic is more efficient, why would we need to do anaerobic respiration? Does anyone know? Not because it's longer lasting, no. Think about what it is if you're doing physical activity and can't respire quick enough yes because what are you not getting enough of you're not getting enough yep you're not getting enough oxygen so anaerobic respiration is useful for exercise so for vigorous exercise because when you're doing a vigorous exercise you're not taking in enough oxygen or you're not getting enough oxygen to aerobically respire. So that's when you undergo anaerobic respiration. So you can get you can get that extra energy boost. So you can say there's not enough oxygen when exercising. So let's look at that. Yep, we got this. We've got the two marks here. Not enough oxygen present. Yep, that was enough for the mark. We mentioned exercise as well, but you only get one mark. So that's fine. Next question. <laughs> What are the end products of aerobic respiration? Two products, this is a quick one guys, let me know, A, B, C or D. Don't get confused between aerobic and photosynthesis. They're the reverse of each other. So we've got people saying D and B, which one is it? 
aerobic, not anaerobic. Someone saying C. Answer is B, carbon dioxide and water. It's aerobic. The other one, so remember, aerobic is glucose plus oxygen goes to carbon dioxide plus water. The other one for lactic acid is anaerobic respiration. Same with the ethanol and carbon dioxide. Where do most of the reactions in aerobic respiration occur? So where does aerobic respiration happen? So this is from cells. What do you guys think? A, B, C, or D? So we've got people saying cytoplasm, mitochondria. Yep, B, mitochondria. Let's write that in our notes. Aerobic respiration transfers energy from glucose. That's what it does. Uh, we can say it occurs in the mitochondria. Which type of respiration is less efficient at transferring energy? Well, it can't be these two. It says which type of respiration. Can't be photosynthesis or fermentation. It's going to be, we've said it already. Yep, anaerobic respiration is less efficient. What is the word equation for anaerobic respiration in a muscle cell? Okay, let me know. A, B, C, or D. And then tap on the screen a few times. Let's see the poll. So most of you are AQA. We got a few Edexcel people in here and we've got some other ones. Okay. People are going for B mostly. Anaerobic mus uh, respiration in muscle cells. Muscle cells are examples of human cells, not a plant cell. So yes, it's going to be the lactic acid one. Next exam question. Yeast is used in brewing and baking industries. Why is use, uh, yeast used in these industries? For four marks. That's a lot of marks. I think you guys know four different points that we can say about yeast. We've got two things. Brewing. So that's to do with making alcoholic drinks. And baking. Making bread, for example. So why would that be useful for that? So those are the two things that it's used for. To so do with fermentation, yes. In the exams, you can list points. Yeah, you can use bullet points. That's fine. What topic is this? This is respiration and photosynthesis. Yes, it makes bread rise. Well done, Nav. So maybe we can add this. So remember here, I wrote yeast. So yeast produces ethanol and CO2. So the CO2 makes the bread rise. And then you've got ethanol which is basically alcohol that's the alcohol that you get in alcoholic drinks so how do we get four marks here first mark is to say it produces co2 another mark to say it produces ethanol another mark to say what the co2 does makes bread rise another mark to say what the ethanol does is the alcohol alcohol in uh we can say drinks or we can say beer or wine or something like that does that mean you can get drunk off bread? No, it doesn't. Uh, okay, next one. Let's let's just double check the mark scheme here. Uh, carbon dioxide produces ethanol, makes bread rise, alcohol in beer. Uh, you can also say it makes it fizzy, yeah. That's what makes some drinks fizzy. Uh, carbon dioxide is what makes drinks fizzy. Can you show me the notes that we've made so far? Yes, so we've done photosynthesis, all of these. I'm going to I'm going to put this all up on YouTube respiration and yeah that's what we've done so far we're nearly done here next up what causes bread to rise in bread making so we just said it now it's going to be carbon dioxide from fermentation not ethanol is the carbon dioxide fermentation in yeast produces out of these ones again we just listed it two things out of these, it was carbon dioxide and ethanol. Yes, well done, guys. You're remembering it. Energy from respiration in animals. Okay, so energy from respiration in animals is used to do what? What do you think? A, B, C, or D? Let me know. And tap on the screen a few times. So we've got people saying C. We've got people saying A. Let me know what you guys think. More people saying A. Ooh, we've got D, absorbing carbon dioxide. It's not D. Definitely not D because respiration doesn't take in carbon dioxide, gives out carbon dioxide. It's not to produce food. Energy from respiration is used to. It's not used to release oxygen. Respiration takes in oxygen. Even that, that's, an, uh, that's aerobic respiration, releases oxygen. So that's not the answer. What we use our energy for in animals, what we mainly use it for is to keep our body temperature at 37 degrees. A lot of energy goes to do that. It's not release on oxygen, remember it uses oxygen. 
Next one, what is the result of incomplete breakdown of glucose during anaerobic respiration? In human cells, we've done this a few times now. This is straightforward. Hopefully you guys remember, it's human cells. So it's going to be, yep, good, lactic acid. Next question, what is the name of the storage molecule in animal cells? What do you guys think here? Where do we store our glucose? Storage molecule, where do we store our glucose? It's all about when you have excess glucose. The answer is not glucose. We don't store it as glucose. We turn it into another form. What do you guys think? We're saying, some people saying A, some people saying B. We've got a lot of Bs here. So yeah, answer is B. Cellulose is used for cell walls in plants. So only plants do that. Starch, again, that's plants. Plants store their glucose as starch. We store it as glycogen. And that's something you learn more of in the homeostasis topic, because that's to do with insulin and controlling our blood sugar levels. So the answer is glycogen. Next question. So we've got three of these limiting factor graphs. What is the minimum light intensity a farmer should use to maximize the rate of photosynthesis in the graph above? What would you guys say the answer is for that? Minimum light intensity. So light intensity is in the X axis. They want to maximize the rate. This is the rate of oxygen. It says the rate of oxygen. Rate of oxygen is pretty much the rate of photosynthesis because if you get more oxygen, the plant is photosynthesizing more. We get a mix of answers. Minimum light intensity. So technically you could say 40,000. That would get you the highest possible rate, but it's asking for the minimum. You don't have to go to 40,000 because 30,000 is going to give you the same amount. If we look at this one, for example, 40,000 and 30,000 both give the same amount. So that's not the minimum. That's not the minimum. So we go back, the answer's around here. And then if you look, that gives you 20,000. The answer is 20,000. Hope that made sense. Next question. The light intensity you gave in part C, so 20,000, may not give the farmer a maximum profit. Why not? What other factors do they need to think about? Yeah, so let me know in the comments. While I do that, I'll explain the last question again uh, for those who didn't understand. So it's asking for the minimum light intensity if they want to maximize the rate of photosynthesis. Rate of photosynthesis, if we look at this graph, all of them are, are going to give you the same answer. But if we look at the top graph, the maximum rate of photosynthesis is around here, isn't it? It's around 26. So what's the minimum light intensity that gives you 26? It's not 40,000. It's not 30,000. It's around 20,000. Because if you go below 20,000, it starts to decrease. So the answer is 20,000. I hope that makes sense. Uh, so let's see what people have said about the last question. There are other limiting factors. Nope. Rate of photosynthesis. Nope. It's all about cost. So we need to talk about what might make it expensive for the farmer. So there's additional costs that we're not taking into account. It's not, it's, it's not like free to uh, add extra light. There's other things that we need to consider. It might, uh, which might affect it. What type of things would increase the cost? So need to consider cost for, yeah, electricity, because you, they're going to heat it up, isn't it? They're going to heat up the greenhouse. So that's going to cost money. So cost for heating, what else? They're adding CO2. This can't be cheap. Increasing or decreasing the concentration of CO2, that can't be cheap. You, you need to basically pump extra CO2 gas into a greenhouse. So need to consider uh, costs for heating and CO2 concentration increase and this could affect the profit so costs could affect or uh, exceed exceed the profit so it might not be a maximum so those are three points we've got one point here about the heating co2 concentration another point and the third point is about the costs exceeding the profit so let's see what else the mark scheme accepts let's see i think it was quite strict actually for this question uh, so the first one was fine, 20,000. They did accept a range, slightly higher, slightly lower, because it wasn't exactly 20,000. Okay, next one. Uh, there's a cost for heating the greenhouse. Yes, there is. We mentioned that. There's a cost for increasing the CO2. There's a cost for lighting. They did accept lighting because, yeah, it's true. Uh, it's going to increase the bills, isn't it? Increasing the lighting. So you could have said that as well. And then the final mark is to say, yeah, it affects the profit. 
which we did mention as well. So that's three marks. Then we got next part. Explain the results when the light intensity was zero. Let's look at where it is zero. So this is where it's zero. Look at that. What can we say about this? For four marks, what do you guys think we can say? We need to say four different points. First of all, it's not obvious. Yeah, it's minus two. Why is it not zero? You would expect it to be zero. In all those, in the rate graphs, these graphs here, it's zero. That's zero, that's zero, that's zero. And this one, it's not zero. Why is it not zero? Is because, yeah, there's no oxygen production, but why is it not zero? If there's no oxygen production, doesn't it mean it should be at zero? Yep, respiration. It's to do with respiration. See here, the difference between these graphs and the graphs that we have here. God, I lost this. I lost the axes. The difference between them is that this is a rate graph. And this is a rate graph. The one that we have in this question is not a rate of photosynthesis is a rate of oxygen production. This was a rate of photosynthesis. I did write rate, but it's a rate of photosynthesis. Write PS for photosynthesis. <laughs> so why is there negative oxygen? Because a plant respires. If there's no light, a plant respires. And when they respire, they're using oxygen. They're not giving off oxygen. Because remember, for respiration, the equation for respiration is this. Glucose plus oxygen goes to carbon dioxide plus water. So they're going to release oxygen when they're not photosynthesizing and they're respiring only. So because they're taking in oxygen, the levels of oxygen are going to go below zero. It's going to be minus two. Let me know if that made sense. Tap on the screen if that made sense. If not, I'll explain one more time. Let me write the answer while you guys do that. So here, what can we say? There's no light. That's what zero lux means. There's no light, therefore, no oxygen released but respiration occurs so respiration still occurs and that uses up oxygen therefore it's negative it's a negative value which is minus two okay so did that make sense guys let's let's take a look at what the mark seems saying when there is no light there is no photosynthesis yes we said that no oxygen produced yes respiration does happen and oxygen it does, does take in oxygen uh, and then we mentioned the minus two and that's because yeah oxygen production is negative well done guys all right we're nearly done we've got a few more questions you guys let me know um the answers for these last few questions and then we'll call it a day next question aerobic respiration is described efficient process because okay we haven't mentioned this anyone know the answer we've got people saying b and a it's not a because aerobic does require oxygen. That's the whole point of aerobic, is it does require oxygen. It fully oxidizes glucose, fully oxidizes, which means it fully reacts with the oxygen. So that's the reason why it's efficient. It maximizes the amount of energy that's transferred from it. Next question, aerobic trans, uh, respiration transfers energy to the environment, making it a, anyone remember the answer for this? Exothermic reaction. Yep, exothermic. Remember, respiration releases energy. Okay, last question, guys. Let me know what the answer is. Comment. Let me know what the answer is. And I'll let you know about the video. So I'll make I'll make a YouTube video on this. Post it sometime next week. Uh, go into my YouTube. I've got all the other lives that I did, all the other longer videos that I made as well. Um, so yeah, subscribe to that. And you'll get notified every time you every time I post a new uh, one of these lives. Uh, I'll upload all the notes that we wrote today, all the questions, and some flashcards on these uh, questions as well that you guys can print out and use for your revision. So yeah, what are you guys saying as the answer? Which one of these is not a use of energy transferred by respiration? So what do we use the energy for? So we do use it to do this build up larger molecules from smaller ones. Yeah, we use it to make proteins from amino acids. We use it to contract, we use it for movement, keep the body temp uh, temp temperature steady in mammals. That is one of the main uses for it. Photosynthesis, no, because where do we get, where do plants get energy for photosynthesis from? They don't get it from respiration. We did this right at the start of the life. Does anyone remember? Exactly, they get the energy from light for photosynthesis, not from respiration. So the answer is in fact D. All right, guys, I'm gonna call it a day today. Um, 
So thank you for coming. Thank you for commenting and taking part. Uh, check out my YouTube. I will post this and uh, the other ones that I did this week. I did one on radioactivity and one on bonding. Uh, next week, if there's anything that you want to do in particular, just let me know. Drop it in a comment in one of my videos or something. I will try and do the next live on Friday. Next Friday. Next biology live. Mm, not sure. Maybe Saturday or the week after. But I'll try and do one, yeah, Friday, Saturday. That's my usual. And if I do have time to do an extra one next week, then I'll post it on my story. So um, checking my story to check. Can I go live tomorrow at six? I'm sorry, I'm busy tomorrow. I can't, I don't, I won't have time to go tomorrow. Um, but yeah, keep an eye out on my on my story and I'll let you guys know when I'm live next. Maybe, maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, but uh, I'm not entirely sure. It all depends on other stuff <laughs> okay so yeah guys thank you um i will see you guys in, in the next lives at some point next week good luck for those of you who have mocks just try your best remember they're not the actual thing but just try try your best um and yeah we got plenty of time to build up for the actual exams and uh, so we'll do quite quite a few lives before your actual exam so even if you don't do well in your mocks um you'll have time to pick it up later all right Okay, guys, have a good evening. I'll see you all at the next live. Bye.